up, everybody? This is Cha Cha Mystique, and you now tuned into Live at Radio. Today is going to be a special Throwback Thursday event that you want to stay tuned to. We got the one and only, the legendary Sparky D. She will definitely be in the place to be. Yes, I ain't got bars like how she got bars, but you already know the vibes. Yeah, it's so much for us to talk about, you know. I think this is one of the the most um, influential um, female rap battles that took place in the super culture called hip-hop. You know, um, those that may know, you know, she battled uh, Roxanne Shante and... Um, she went through a lot of other stuff. Uh, she was down with Russell Simmons. All these different things. So, she's in the building, y'all. She's in the building. Let me bring her up and so we can have this dope conversation. Hey, Cha-Cha. Yeah. How are you? How are you? Yes, yeah, Sparky D, the apostle. She got bars you can rock to. Yeah. Yes. I like that. You got me on my room and stuff. Uh, yeah, I like that. Sparky D, the apostle. Got rhymes you can rock to. Now you got me rapping. I'm on my way to the mountains. I hope we don't get cut off. Hi, thank you for having me. Yes, uh, thank you for agreeing to do this interview. You know, I'm so inspired by your story and everything like that. And and I just want to say thank you for your contributions to hip hop. You know, Welcome. if it thank wasn't you. yes, if it wasn't for you and and your influence, we wouldn't have a lot of the female artists that we have today. So shout out to you. Yes, yes, thank you, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Right, so, my pleasure. The pleasure is all mine. Yes. So, you know, I, I want to ask you a few things that people don't normally ask you. That's what you I'm know. Um, yes. So you grew up in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I grew up yes. in Brown. And home of the Braves. You know what that is. Shout never out to will. <laughs> Yes. Yes. So um, we are aware that you came from a multi multicultural background. Yes. Now, how was that? How was that like growing up in the hood of of Brooklyn? Yo, it was it was it was strange. It was strange, you know. Light skin, green eyes, mother white, father black. Everybody around you straight black. You know what I mean? And um, we just took to the streets as our family. We ain't have no I mean, no aunts, no uncles, no grandmothers, no grandfathers. Like you, you'll go for the summer to your cousin house. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we going down south, or we going here? But we we didn't have that because my mother was white, my father was black. So Brownsville was our family. You know what I mean? It, yes. it was kind of hard, but you know they 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 took us in. You know, shout out to Brownsville. They took us in. Yes. Now you do have a real gutter flow. Like I was listening to a lot of your early work and I'm like, oh, she got a lot of spunk for her. But yes. was that like that in your household? Like what were some of the things that you were listening to, especially given the fact that you had a white mom where she was listening to soul? And, yeah, she was and listening to soul. Like yeah, she was listening to soul. You know, her favorite record, which is mine, is um, I can understand it, baby. You know, I can't sing, y'all. Yeah, yeah, get on down. You know, get on the good foot. James Brown, all of it. You know, my mother, she was white, but she was black. You know, come to find out as I grew older, my mother was a number runner. You know what I mean? She was a number runner. She was a hustler. She had that grind. You know, she also was a school teacher. And every time we walk on the Ave, I'm like, the, like the brothers that I like, the niggas that I like, why they talking to my mama? You know, why they giving, their, giving her, her their jewelry? You know, my mother was down. She was down for the crown. Oh, she was tapping yeah, pockets. Yeah, yeah, she, she was. was tapping, running <laughs> down on yeah, them. Yeah, she was. She was. You know, my father was a gambler. You know, we didn't know. He left the house at 4 o'clock in the evening, came back that next morning. But he had a gambling house in Far Rockaway. You know, but they did what they had to do, you know, to take care of us. We wanted for nothing. You know, we lived in the, on the 14th floor, and um, we wanted for nothing. You know, um, not knowing what they had to do to get it. You know, like like most families, but we want it for nothing. Yes. Was it hard to adjust in the culture of Brooklyn? Um, you know, people knowing your reality and it, was it hard for you to fit in? 
No, it, you know, it really wasn't. I was always I always was a people person. And being a young girl, I used to dance before I rapped. I used to dance. You know how we used to do in the projects, everybody get together and have damn dance groups. And we used to always win. And mind you, I had long hair, light skin, green eyes, ponytail, a big booty at that time, you know, and it was mine. You know what I mean? And I looked it good. So, I mean... Niggas love me, you know, and it it was what it was. You know, girls was jealous, so it was hard because I had green eyes, you know, and um, the character that I have, you know, um, it was always about me, you know. You know, I, I, I'm, okay. I'm a people person, but I didn't, you know, hands down, you know, whatever you want to do, you want to do. And that's just how I roll. I always had that um mentality. You know, Brownsville gives us that. But in my household, um, we had respect. We had to be up upstairs at six o'clock to eat. No company. You know, my mother father raised us well, you know, and um we had strict mother we had strict parents. You know, we went to Catholic school. My mother didn't want us to go to school in Brownsville, I guess because she was white and she want, she bust us out to Queens, you know, and she tried to do the best she could. But we took to the streets as our family and Brownsville is our family for life. And that's what it was. Yes. The, uh, so you, you started out dancing. Can you uh, tell us about the transition into music? Um, I read somewhere that you wasn't even a rapper. So what inspired that? You know, honestly, and to this day, I could tell you, I, I'm really not. I just always wanted to be an actress, and I was a dancer. Um, they used to play music outside. Um, the Dance Masters uh, made a rest in peace, School to Love. They used to play music outside, and, and, and you know, when I heard Shy Rock, when I heard MC Shy Rock, when I heard Pebbly Pool, when I heard Dimples D, I was like, yo, I want to do this, you know. And one day I was walking through the projects, and the group called the Playgirls, which consists of Moski and Cindy Slim, was in the project. So you know how we boom, bap, bap, boom, on the walls. And I just walked in the project. I was like, yo, y'all girls can't rap. And they was like, oh, Spark, yeah, you can't rap. And I just started rapping. And we just formed the group. You know, they had a group. I just got into the group. And I just began, you know, begin to rap, you know. And that's yes. what it was. And for somebody to say, oh, you really not a rapper, I mean, you had a lot of swag in your bars. Like, it was very spunky. I would listen to a lot of stuff. You had much attitude. So that's something that I do get uh, for, for you from your early music and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So you in a group, but it seems like, you know, you, as soon as you heard Roxanne Chante, you held Brooklyn on your back. I think you was probably one of the ones that were very vocal about holding Brooklyn down yes. and everything like that. Did you know you you UTFO at that time? No. Um when you Okay. Not really. No, I didn't. I just knew that they came from Brooklyn. You know, I heard of them. You know, we have seen each other. I heard of them. But um they came from Brooklyn and I had to rep like you said, I had to rep Brooklyn. <clears throat> you know, and I stood up for Brooklyn and 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 actually you're right. You know, that comes to me all the time. I am the first female to carry Brooklyn on the map. You know what I mean? Um uh uh Jay Z um Sparky D started it and Jay-Z held it down. You know what I mean? Yes. And then MC Light. You know what I'm saying? So I truly believe that. Then a Chub Rock. Then a Houdini. You know, but yeah. Yeah, I did. I yes. did. I held it down. Yes. So so after you came into the defense of UTFO, when did you guys meet? Was there ever a time when they'd be like, yeah, we heard you. You had us. You hold us down. And and what was that camaraderie like if that if, 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 when y'all finally came together? You know, um, yeah, you know, it, it was cool. They was like, okay, Spark, thanks, you know. But it wasn't so much of that because all of us were young. We were all happy to be on the road, you know what I mean? And it was kind of rough because they wanted to shine, you know what I mean? Uh, 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 Roxanne Shante wasn't um, the Roxanne that they were looking for. They didn't expect her to answer them, you know what I mean? So when she answered them and I answered her, we kind of took that limelight. You follow what I'm saying? We kind of took that limelight. Rest in peace to my brothers in UTFO. Doc Ice, I love you. He's not dead, though, but the rest of them are. But um, Roxanne Shantae and Sparky D kind of took that limelight away from um, Roxanne Roxanne from UTFO. Even though they did the touring, they're very well known. They went out. You know, they're big. But um, we took that limelight uh, away from them because now you got two female um, artists battling. You know what I'm saying? And we were so young and we were selling out arenas, not just um, 
uh, 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 clubs, we were selling out arenas at a young age. You know, and yes. no, I didn't like her and she yeah. didn't like me at all. Yes, and, and and I was just about to get into that. So you never met her, but you felt like you had to defend Brooklyn. So what was that like when y'all first came in together? Because I, I know we know that you know you you it was a tour um, surrounding that battle. Mm -hmm. So I mean, was the energy high? Oh yeah, was, was that oh, yes. Did y'all throw it down? Yes, we didn't throw down, but um, the energy was very high to the point as I come from Brooklyn, she come from Queens. So Brooklyn and Queens was against each other. Now, mind you, Cool DJ Red Alert was on um ninety eight point seven Kiss. And Molly Ma was on WBLS. But because of the commodity of Roxanne Shantae and Sparky D, both radio stations started battling. They started disliking okay. each other. So, you know, we have five boroughs. So uh, uh, let's say Strong Island was for Sparky D, but the Bronx was for Roxanne Shantae. Manhattan was for Sparky D. And, you know, yeah, the whole, all the boroughs was um, going at it, you know, really going okay. at it um, when, that, when the, our two records came out. We started some stuff, girl. We started the beef, I tell you. Yes. So, I mean, in the movie Roxanne, Roxanne, we do know that she was stepped out of some funds. Mm -hmm. You weren't. Um, we, we understand that it was a lot of things going on behind the scenes that were very unfair, especially right. for female artists. Yes. And you kind of see those attributes to this day mm -hmm. um, of a lot of things being unfair compared to your male um, counterparts. Why do you think that they wasn't trying to get break her off of her bread? Uh, you was, was it a better management situation? No, you know, management, their, her management was cool, which that consists of Mr. Magic, um, may he rest in peace, and Fly Ty. You know, they were cool, but um, we got paid. You know what I mean? We got paid. I really don't know what happened, but we got paid. Everywhere we went, we got paid. We did not step on the stage unless you paid us our other half. And they had that same mentality. So I don't know what happened. But at the end of the day, like I said in the movie, I seen her crying. And I said to Moski, I said, I wonder what she over there crying for. So I went to, I said, what you crying for? She said, I ain't get paid and I don't have no papers for my baby. So I pulled about $1,500 out. And I told her at the end of the day, we still sisters. And I gave her the money. And, you know, she said until this day, that's the first, um, the respect that she ever had in hip hop, you know, that meant so much to her. And she said, I'm a dancer. At your, I mean, I'm a dancer at your wedding. And I said, no, you're going to host my wedding. And she did. Yes. She kept her yeah, word. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that, but I, I kind of want to stay right there. Okay. Um, I want to explain, um, who, Whose idea was it for the tour? Because I feel like that was really brilliant. And honestly, I feel like a lot of other female artists, like uh, uh, a Nicki Minaj and a Cardi B or a Little Kim and Foxy, that would have been genius for them to do. I think they would have sold out and, and, and really had shake up the culture a lot. I think that was very genius for them to put y'all together, even though tensions were kind of high. Yes, so I, wanted, I want you to pay homage to the person that, that idea sprang from and all the people that were a part of that tour. Right. Um, it was our record company, actually. It was our record company that um, decided that we need to go on tour. You know what I mean? And um, we done it. We done it. You know, we sold out um, North Carolina, Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. You know, two little girls just selling out, again, arenas. You know, wherever we go, wherever we went, we sold out. You know, and so it was our record company's idea. But the 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 um tour that we were on was a Jerry Fryson tour, and she did not um she didn't get paid on that tour, and I don't know why. You know what I mean? But if Nicki Minaj or Foxy Brown and um Cardi B and they do that, it would be great. You know what I mean? And and yes, and, I would love and, to and come see together it. with old school females, but that's just not gonna happen. You know what I mean? And well, let's cross our fingers on that. Let's cross our fingers. Yeah, I would love to. I would love to be on that. Yeah, one. because I mean, I mean, you know, we could we could all agree, hip hop started as as battle rap. You know what yes. I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. and until it came into the mainstream, and now, and I'm pretty sure even then, when when people was coming out with um things to say about another artist or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. As a fan, we mm -hmm. looking for the answer. We right. like, oh, you heard what she said, and <laughs> right, then now right. we like, okay, we gotta wait to 
the other person come out and say what they're gonna say and stuff like that. The mm -hmm. anticipation for mm -hmm. it is, is crazy, you know. So I, I think that's a great marketing strategy. I hope they implement that moving forward in hip hop because we all been waiting know, for it. Yeah, we be waiting for it, and mm -hmm. then we want to see it on the same stage. People will spend all their money just to see that, you right, know. And will. I think that's they very will. iconic. Yeah, they will. Yeah, and, 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 and then not only that, really it would dead a lot of beats. It will dead a lot of beef, and then you'll see a lot of um, a lot of difference, you know, because we all are different in our own ways, you know. We all are queens, but you can see the difference, you know what I mean? Who's an MC? Who's in a who's in a who's a rapper? You know what I mean? Who's a stage who's performer? Who's a stage performer? You know, I'm not talking about oh, coming down from the ceiling, you know, with all the lights, you know, because we don't have all that money. The old school females don't have that money, but really see who could pick up a microphone and rock the crowd. And I'm not talking about a hook either. Okay, that's, that's you know. That's, so that's, I I just truly believe it needs to be done. Yes. So I saw somewhere when you was talking about colorism a little bit, mm -hmm. and I kind of want you. to expound on that you know what i'm saying because you would be the typical thing that would be acceptable in the culture where people want to see you know and and, and a rock, someone like like the likes of roxanne Chate will always be put to the back or probably be undermined in a lot of things because of, of her so how does that make you feel like a black woman because it's not only about the the era that you guys were in but i kind of want to shed light because a lot of women deal with that these things to this day some people feel like they're not lighting enough or they don't have the so-called look you know and i always me being a brown girl i always wanted to know how did that make uh, a, a lighter skin um woman feel especially if she's black you know do you take those kind of things into consideration um does it make you feel bad as well or it just doesn't matter you know um i went through that growing up because i had a white mother and a black father so it really didn't matter to me because that was my mother. I loved my mother. She was white. You know, I woke up to a white mother. You know, I woke up to a black father. So it didn't matter. What mattered was when I went to school and I had to run down this block all the time because they were um, beating up the black kids with bats, you know, the white people. And I had to run with them. You know what I mean? And not having no family. So I took that to heart. Racism. I took it to heart. But when Apostle Paul says um, he had to do as the Romans do, you know, um, if I was white, I had to be white. If I had to be black, I had to be black. If I had to be Puerto Rican, I had to be Puerto Rican. So I took that to my advantage. You know, I never looked at that um, if I was better than someone because I was light with green eyes. I took it to my advantage. You know what I mean? Um, I may get the job and the dark skinned girl don't get the job, you know, and I understand that. But. I did what I had to do to get where I had to go. And I still go by that. You know, um, love all my black sisters, love all my white sisters, love all my yellow sisters. And I never um, took it to heart that way. But when it came down to my parents, you know, and my family, I took it to heart. But living out here in this world, and I got to do what I got to do. So if I have to be Puerto Rican, me and I, my friend. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I knew that's you know, right. So I have to do what I have to do to get where I have to go. So, yes. You know, that's so my standpoint how did you meet the legendary DJ Red Alert? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? She's the only one who ever asked that question. We were in Russell Simmons' office, and that's when he had Rush Productions on 28th Street, 28th and Broadway. And Chuck Chill Out and Red Alert came into the office. And I was looking for a DJ because Sparky's turn, that record was really, really hot. It was time for me to go on tour and I'm doing all these plays, you know, these gigs and I don't have a DJ. And Russell Simmons said, Russ said, well, which one do you want? And I said, uh, uh, give me the one with the red hair. And that's how I met Cool DJ Red Alert. Love Chuck Chill Out. You know, that's my brother. Big up to Chuck Chill Out. But um, I think I made the right decision because Cool DJ Red Alert has been in my life even to this day. I don't sign a contract. I don't do a show. I don't intertwine with anybody unless I call Cool DJ Red Alert. You know, when I was on drugs, I used to call Cool DJ Red Alert and say, oh, wow, how does Eve look? Could Eve perform better than me? What about Queen Latifah? You know? Because I was gone in the 90s. I was on drugs. So I will call Red to get all my information. So I, I believe in my heart I made the right choice because he's still my brother today and he's still my DJ. Yes. And one of the things that um, 
you will always say in your previous interviews how he held you down, like how you held Brooklyn down, like any kind of secrets or, or anything like that. He never outed you. If the public eye knew something about you is because it came from your mouth yourself. So can you give another example of where he exercised and show his loyalty to you? Um, I'll be very honest with you. Red Alert will tell anybody and everybody I took him around the world. You know, I introduced them to the world. You know, um, at any given time, if someone wants to talk to me, he wants to know what is, you know, what it's about. You know, um, you know, he's always there for me, no matter what. You know, no matter what. In any situation, Red is standing right there in the gap for me. But Red always said that I introduced him to the world. If it wasn't for me, he wouldn't have went around the world. You know what I mean? So I just thank and praise God for cool DJ Red Alert. Yeah, shout out to DJ Red Alert. I had Absolutely. the luxury of interviewing him myself, and he has so many classic throwback stories. That, yes. And I'm pretty sure if it wasn't for the time constraints, we could have been there all day yeah, just yeah. talking about yeah. hip hop, you know. Mm -hmm. And 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 I and you know, too bad that that interview didn't come out. It was something behind the scenes. But if I ever get another opportunity, I'll probably ask him some of the same questions just to get that you back will. on on record. You will, yeah. But yeah, shout out to him, um, Uncle Red. Yes, yes. Uncle so Red. So is it true you was going to have a, a, a doll, a Sparky D doll? Yes, I was. I was going to have a Sparky D doll. But Russell Simmons said, if you pull the string, I would say, who effing world is this? You know, that's all I used to say when I came on stage. The first thing would come out my mouth is, who effing world is this? And they would say, Sparky D. Just like Run would say, who effing house is this? And they would say, Run. You know, so yes, I was going to have a Sparky D doll. Yes, I was. Now, was that was that phrase um, also adopted by um, Queensbridge, another Queensbridge native, Nas? You better know it. Nas was so young in the studio. Girl, I like you. I like you. You, you like saying some too. things. Um, your, your questions for this interview is really, really great because a lot of people are not hitting. You know what I'm saying? They're not asking these, these very important questions. But Nas was in the studio with Molly Mall always. And... Um, Spider D, we were in the studio, and Nas was like, I'm a rat one day. He was like, Can I have um it's Nas World? And here I am. I'm Sparky D. I'm the height of my career. And I'm like, sure, you can have it. Like, I uh, he ain't gonna, you know, he, he just say they a little boy. Girl, he fooled me, didn't he? <laughs> so yes. And hey, you know what's so, you know what's so crazy? When you hear a lot of the OGs talk about Nas, they always like Talk about his early days as so uh, dismissive, like, you know, they didn't think too much of him when they first uh, get to talk to him. You know, no, I, I just... He was um, a little boy. You know, he was little. He was in the studio, you know, um, and, and again... Not down in his dream, but when, when you're at the height of your career and you see a little boy, you're not down in the dream. It's just like, okay, you can have it. Whenever you become uh, Nas, you know, whatever your name is going to be, you sure can have it. It's Nas World. And he said, okay, I'm going to use the Sparky Thanks. And yes. lo and behold. Now being, now, being that he's from Queens, you from Brooklyn, you came at one of the um, Queens Bridge Queens to come out, but you did a lot of work in Brooklyn, um, and you even performed in Queens Bridge uh, at one point, yes. you know, where Roxanne Shante talks about um, buying a ticket just to see who you were. Like, who is this girl talking all this jazz? Coming up you know in what I'm saying? Projects, right? All up in, that, <laughs> now, that's gangster. That's straight gangster. That's gangster. Yes, it is. I went up to yes. the projects. I went into yes. the projects so, at the so PAL. Did you face a lot of uh, problems like that? Because I know back in the day, if people talk about these days that rough, I know back in the day was hella rough. Yeah, they were. So, you know, what, what gave you that courage? Because people don't normally do that. Coming from you know? Brownsville, I didn't give up. I didn't care. I'm from Brownsville. Never ran, never will. How am I from Brownsville? You cut from a different cloth. You know, you cut from a straight different cloth. And um, I didn't care. You know, and and no, but uh, the Juice Crew, uh, Nas, uh, uh, um, Big Daddy Kane, MC Shan, they my brothers. You know, I'm the first cousin to the Juice Crew. You know, MC Shan is my brother. Okay. You know, we 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 uh, we liable to be at each other house any a, any given day. You know, eating. You know, I'm laying in the bed, he laying in the bed with me. We watching TV. You know, so so those are my brothers and sisters. You know, salute to the Juice yes, Crew. Yes, and shout out to. 
Yes, and shout out to MC Sham because that in my head he's my uncle, yo. Right. Sizzle with the whistle. Yeah. yeah, so so something. Yeah. Yes, he is such a character too. Yes. Like what? I mean, mm -hmm. I can only imagine what he was like, you know, when in his prime, how crazy that oh, dude was, was no because he is out of sight these days. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So so how how was that? You know, did they welcome you at the beginning with open arms? Because I'm pretty sure you you have a dope personality too. They like did. I'm watching some they of this stuff. Or was it, it had to take some time or it was off the bat? No, off the rip, they did. You know, Bismarck was going to open up for me. Biz was going to be a part of my crew, you know. Oh, okay. And yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. He opened up for me for the fun house. And um, I don't know what happened. I can't remember. But he wound up opening up for Shawnee and he stayed with um, the Juice Crew. But no, they, you know, we were always friends. You know, they would speak to me. Um, and Sham would speak to me or whatever. But, um, you know, they would be on her side. Oh, Shawnee, you could dog her. You could dog her. But uh, they always spoke to me, even when she wasn't looking. You know what I mean? They they, they would speak to me. They would always yeah, show they you was love. Cool. And, yeah, and show I, me love. Yeah, and, 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 and I get that. And, you know, I, I really commend your, your courage and your bravery. And you showed a lot of that in your young age. And I feel like those were some of the reasons why you overcame your situation. Right. So you were just kind of saying that, you know, even when you was working with um, DJ, cool DJ Red of Lurch, uh, mm -hmm. um, he held a lot of your secrets and things like that. Was that the beginning to the start of um, you going into your addiction and stuff like that. And how was you able to uh, start, have have that dysfunction in your life and still try to be a, a hip hop uh, artist? You know, um, sniffing cocaine is totally different than smoking crack. And I will hide from Cool DJ Red Alert. Oh no, Cool DJ Red Alert didn't know. You know what I mean? And if he knew, he wouldn't tell me. You know what I mean? He didn't say anything. But it was when... Um, I started not coming out, not going to parties. You know, I never missed a show, you know, but when 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 I stopped going to parties and clubs, you know, the Latin quarters and, and stopped being involved, you know, he knew it was something, you know what I mean? And and it was just my downfall. And um, he kept it a secret. He didn't go around telling nobody nothing. But if I had a show, I would always show up for a show because I had to get high. That was my money. You know yeah. what I mean? I had to get high. That was my money. But um, he never said anything to anybody. He never once said anything to anybody. You know, you want to know something, he'll say, go ask her, don't ask me. You know? Yes. So, yeah. It was now, now, coming... Now, now, with that addiction comes a lot of different stuff. You know, since you're not... Um, doing music and doing shows and like that you have to find ways to get money and I'm yeah. pretty sure you did have to do a lot of things you weren't proud of mm -hmm. I, I mean unless you're comfortable I don't I, I don't mind not getting into the details I'm of, a, of that situation. No I'm an open book 17 years of crack cocaine, prostitution domestic violence, homelessness you know what I mean there's nothing I wouldn't do to get what I wanted you know if I rob I had to rob you I got you you know what I mean I took whatever I wanted when I wanted and why I wanted I took it you know, and that's the mama, it, the mama's, the mama skills came into play at that time. <laughs> tap the pocket, you know, and and that's what I did. You know, and um, I sold a lot of drugs. See, it just why I wasn't smoking. I sold a lot of drugs. You know, um, the story in Brownsville. You know, uh, with Baby Sam. You know, I started that empire. You know, they can go Google it. You know, I started that uh, empire, and um, just through the grace of God that we're all here today. You know, just through the grace of God that we're here today. <laughs> But um now now just trying to um provide a learning lesson uh from the situation, especially because of addiction. You right now we're in an era where popping mollies and doing drugs and things like that is cool, it's celebrated. It seemed like that's is, is a coming up age thing. If you're not doing that, then you ain't down. Um and then people um end up in these weird situations and don't know how it starts. So can you explain how easy somebody could fall into those traps, you know? Um, did it start it out just rec recreationally? No, where I just wanted to be maybe... accepted. You know, okay, because other people around you was um, using um, yeah, cocaine? Other people, yeah, you know, I started you. let me tell you, when I first touched cocaine, and a lot of girls do this, you know, uh, my boyfriend was doing cocaine. My boyfriend was doing cocaine. And, um, 
Spider D. That's his name. Ain't no my boyfriend. That was Spider D. He was doing cocaine. And, you know, being that I was my boyfriend, you know, I wanted to do it with him. You know, let me see. Did he ever, like, like, pressured you or no, anything never, like that? No, he never pressured okay. me. You know, a lot of girls do it because their boyfriends do it, you know, and then they get hooked. You know what I mean? Um, any addiction, um, just say no. You know, the drugs, the cocaine, the crack, the mollies, the opioids. Addiction is real. Addiction is real, you know. And, and, and going down that life, I mean, it's terrible. It's a dark place, a dark, dark place. Yes. A very, very dark and, place. And and moving forward, you know, a lot of people, you um, being a, a, a ex addict, or while you was in that in that road to being an addict, you had to do a lot of things to make sure you able to keep up with your high. Right. And you and you will have to deal with things that you wouldn't normally deal with if you had a clear head. Um, a lot of people were going, a lot of women face domestic violence and that's something me and you have a common. Me and you have a lot in common because you a Gemini too. Yeah. But we're going to talk about that okay. later. But one of the things that we do, we both domestic violence survivors. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Some people um, end up in those situations thinking one person, somebody is the same, uh, was one way, but turn out to be the next. That's what right. was that um, being, what was that start like for you? Um, was this person always like this, but you just had a, a codependency type of relationship or did he present himself as a great man, but then ended up a, a monster? Can you explain? You know, mm -hmm. you know um, now I can explain. You know, just wanted to be accepted. You know, just wanted to be loved. You know, um, we see the red flags. Actually, I'm doing a conference, Bitter the Better the Breakthrough, and speaking about this. We see the red flags. But being that the strong women that we are, we figure we can deal with those red flags. Oh, that's all right. A nigga ain't gonna do that to me because I'm, you know, I'm Sparky D. You know what I'm saying? Or well, he ain't gonna do it to Cha Cha because you know I could, you know. We see those red flags and we think we could finagle through them. Nah, I ain't gonna worry about that. He think he gonna do that to me? He ain't my father. I ain't gonna worry about it because we want what we want. But sometimes we want to be loved, you know. And we think we can get love from him, you know. This is what we want, but we see the red flags. We know it's no good for us, but we want it anyway. You know, we want it anyway. And even in the word of God, God says, I'll give you what you want, but your soul will, your soul will be sorrowful, you know? So we want what we want. We see the red flags, but um, we pay them no mind. We think we can get through those red flags, but honestly, that we can't. We can't. And those red flags start bringing us down like an elephant on our back. It's a heavy weight. You know, and looking for love all in the wrong places. And and mainly, I believe, going through domestic violence, we're looking for love. We want to be loved. You know, and um, that's why we stay. And then we start saying, oh, it's my fault. I shouldn't have did this. No. No man don't supposed to never hit a woman. Never. Well, one of the things that I learned um, coming out of that process, I had to go to therapy, you know, because I, I used to suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder from it. Mm -hmm. And I came to the realization that the reason why I I forgave so much, you know what I'm saying, and, and accepted that type of treatment is because there was somewhere in my past that either taught me that that thing, that that kind of behavior was okay or, or had me used to it, that it didn't totally shock me to where I ran out the back door. Was there any moment in your past where you accepted some kind of abuse from any person, whether it be a family member or maybe some people from your crew and you probably just looked over it like if it was a normal type of thing? You know, sis, um, that was a deep question. You know, I used to be scared to fight when I was little. You know, so maybe it was that. Maybe it was that. You know what I mean? Maybe it was that. Um, but um, no, I just was looking for love. I was looking for love. I know mine. I was looking for love, you know, and I didn't know my worth. I didn't know my worth. Mm -hmm. Now I know that who. Was now now I know who I am. Too. I know who I am and whose I am. You know, and just mm -hmm. coming out of a verbal and abusive relay, a marriage, to keep it real with you, never again. Not I. No. Mm -mm. 
I'm off the grid. What, 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 what was your breaking point, though, to make you come to that realization, like, I'm done with this. I'm done with this I lifestyle. I, I know who I am and whose I am. You know, I'm a child of God. God made me different. Wait, but, but, what, what I mean by that is, like, um, was it a, a particular event or you just no. woke up with that realization? No, I woke like, up with that. I'm, I'm not dealing with this no more. I'm not dealing with this no more. I know who I am and whose I am. I'm a powerful woman of God. I'm anointed and appointed for this season. And no demon or human in hell is going to stop me. So I do what I want to do when I want to do it. Yes. And say um, what I want to say. Yes. And, and when you when you came out of that, was that also breaking the chains to your addiction as well at the same time when no, you was that trying to leave happened. that? Position? No, that just happened. Okay. I Just um, last year, just last year, you know, even though I was clean and I was saved and sanctified and, 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 and still going on in ministry, I really didn't know my worth. You know, I allowed people to wow. take advantage of me. I kept my heart. You know, my heart is so big. I wore my heart on my shoulder, but never again. You know, God said, dust your feet off. And I, and, and, and I had to understand the word of God, you know, and really um, apply that to my life. So I am now at 56, standing tall. And never, and, and and never I, again. I want to give you a round of applause for that, sweet, because... You know, a lot of people don't come out of it. You know, I understand you saying that you're 56, but there are women out there who's 60, 70 years old and still suffering through those battles. And they and are. Suffering, yeah, still suffering through those addictions. My mom, uh, you know, she's roaming Brooklyn right now, lost out of her wow. mind. And, you know, wow. so I, I get I get that, you know. Mm -hmm. Um and, and and I feel like I have to share with you because mm -hmm. you know I hate people doing interviews and then they they ask them these type of questions and then just leave them on the fish line and I just want to let you know you're not alone. Um, people are taking these things step by step and you are brave enough to get out of those um um situations and I commend. Yeah, I it commend wasn't easy. It wasn't I wanna easy. I want to let you know you got people who love you out here, even Thank though we you. never physically met out here. I I'm inspired by Thank your story. You. And I really hold it sincere to my heart, and I just want to give you your flowers um, during this Thank during you so this much. interview. Yeah, it wasn't easy, you know, and it's still not easy. It's just one day at a time. It's one day at a time. Finally, at fifty six, I'm finally um, going to do what I want to do. You know what I mean? Somebody was telling you what to do, what to do. You know, um, being caught in that web. You know what I mean? Or or taking someone else's advice, knowing I have greatness down inside me. You know what I mean? Always listening to somebody else. So never again. Never yes. again in life. So, so you Sparky D the apostle now. Yes, ma'am. You be having your sermons. Yes. You be having people catch the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. So with that being said, I mean, it makes sense because you, you, you had a very strong voice and people always wanted to hear you speak as a as a uh, artist. So what started that transition into ministries? Because that's huge from being this super dope hip hop artist, you know, facing different battles. And even though you, you, you got out of it, but now you in the covenant of God. So so what was that like? And who introduced you to that lifestyle? Uh, my mom introduced me to Jesus Christ a long time ago. Long time ago. But I remember I was in Hopewell and I had my last um, child. And, um, you know, the carrier, you carry him in the carrier. I never forget. Um, I was asking for quarters on the street. And I looked up to the sky. And I said, God, I don't belong here. And I fell to my knees, you know, and um, instantly he took a lot of stuff away from me instantly, you know, and I just started going to church and I gave my life to Christ and God began to use me, you know, um, God began to teach me witches and warlocks and show me different things and tell me there's a man at the beauty supply store waiting for you and he has this on. And I would tell my girlfriend and I told God when I got saved, I have to tell because he said, um, when you pray in secret, he'll reward you openly. But I had to um, tell her because they needed to see the glory of God. So I took her to the beauty supply store and the man had those clothes on and he would say, I was waiting for you. What took you so long?
You know, God would show me so many different things. You know, I would encounter on a lot of different things, out of body experience, um, raising the dead, um, telling me what to say, who's around the corner, um, just a lot of different things. And um, I knew I was called by God, but it took me a long time to really know who I am and whose I am. And even up to this year, even though I was doing ministry um, on the phone, you know, um, on Facebook, still not really, I'm, I'm believing it because I know who God is, but God, you really want to use me? You turn the whole into a housewife? Me? You know, but, I mean, Jesus did. I understand that, but you know, um, going into the gospel, coming out of hip hop and going into the gospel, people do not accept you. So I wasn't accepted. So church hurt was the worst hurt. I wasn't accepted. So, you know, the Bible says don't get weary and well doing. So he knew we were going to get weary. You know, the, the, the apostle that wrote that, he knew we was going to get weary. So um, I got weary in my well doing. So like they don't accept you, you know, like you're supposed to have certain clothes on or you don't talk like them. You know what I mean? And you don't look like them. But then I had to understand 17 years of crack cocaine, prostitutes, and domestic violence or homelessness. That is ministry. You know, so I had to be delivered from people, you know. And how are um, you going to be able to give your testimony without the test? Exactly. So I had to go through a lot of different things. And um, I'm here now, you know, on fire. In on order fire. for you to speak from truth. And that's what I think a lot of people don't realize it. Or maybe they realize it to after the fact. But you don't, you know, see that kind of thing when you um, knee deep in the mud with right, it. You know what right. I'm saying? And, and, and he was using you then. So when you are talking to the people, you're not just talking out your ass. You're talking from true life experience. And I feel like that's the reason why people can connect to you so much because now you're not a hypocrite. Now you're not just somebody with a label and we're supposed to believe in what you say. You're actually living in that but you, divine but you, step. But you know what, sis? Back in the days, we would call that swag. And they still attracted to me because everybody loved being around me. Everybody wanted spark, 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 spark. But we thought it was swag, but it was the anointing a long time ago. You know, but we didn't know it was the anointing. God would use me even in the midst of, of going to the crack house. You know what I mean? Even even um going to different things and, and like you said, knee deep in the mud, God would use me. So um, hey, I just give God all the glory for my life. I wouldn't even change my life. I wouldn't even if I had a chance to go back and change it, I wouldn't even change it. I wouldn't even change so, it. So so are you are you like visiting a uh uh what they call it? I don't know. Visiting um, minister, you know, when you, you go and preach the word and hold yes. different events because yes, they're not accepting you in a particular church or whatever. Would there come a day where we're going to have Sparky D, AME? Well, yes, yeah, I got that's an offering. I got some <laughs> That's already in the plan. That's why I have yes, that back I would for love a while. That's already that. in the plan. That's already in the plan and it's coming. Yes, I want to be in the choir. Yes, I think I can do it. You could do it? Okay. Well, nah, I'm, I'm <laughs> you could do it. I'm but yes, that's in yeah, the plan. Hear me. That's in the plan. And my yeah. ministry is Treasure Ministries. It's my pleasure to find your treasure with inside yourself. That's the name of the ministry God has given me. So yes, that's in the plan. And we're coming to New yes. York. We're coming to New York. I suppose. Yes, and, and I would love, I would love to see that. You know what I'm saying? Because I think it's very important. And you know what's so dope about the culture? Like you're starting to see a lot of people branch out. You see people um in politics, like um Debris Kelly. Um, D, um, Dupree Kelly, right, I think I'm right. saying his name I right. Um, you know, he's in the politics mm -hmm. in Jersey. You're starting to see Red Man um, co-sign him and, and be a part of that campaign. Right. Um, you see hip hop and ministries That's now, right. not only with you but Reverend Run and and you know formulating their own churches That's and right. stuff like that. And you start to see a lot of people in different other avenues where um, it's not just about the music, but you see that hip hop is a lifestyle as well. Yes, it's it a is. way of thinking and it's proving that to be so, you know, especially standing the test of time. Did you ever feel like hip hop would get to this point um, back then? No, who would have ever thought, you know, we thought it was a fad. We just got up and, and, you know, there's something that we built, you know, we built this, you know, um, who would have thought that hip hop would bring us this far? Who would have thought that hip hop would bring us this far? All over the world, you know, that I had a part in um, a Chinese little girl rapping right now. I had a part, you know, in Israel. I had a part, you know, 
um, who would have thought that rap would would come this far? You know, yes. let's just say hip hop. Who would have thought that hip hop would come this far? You know, but God yes. knew. We didn't know, but yes. Yes. Now, I heard you explain this before, but I kind of want you to do it on my show. Okay. You wrote a book, From the Pit to Palace, yeah, right? Yeah, From the Pit to the Palace. And, but, but I want you to, we understand what the pit is. I think that could all resonate things. But when you think of the word palace, people think of something tangible or, or a place or a thing. Can you explain what, what the definition of palace to, uh, from Sparky D? Well, the palace was building a relationship with my children. You know, getting to know who my children were. You know, um, having more, having more um, pairs of underclothes than one. You know what I mean? Learning to live life on life terms all over again. Just loving on myself. You know, and people uh, would think um, the pit to the palace is tangible things, but it wasn't. It's just learning to love myself and love my children. And being a mother to my children, learning how to be a mother to my children all over again. And I'm having a ball. And now they can get out. I mean, they on their <laughs> own, but they just on my nerves. <laughs> yeah, they always going to get on yeah. your nerves. That's never going to stop. No, it's never going to yeah. stop. So, so just, just, just to make it clear, the palace is more of a clear and pure mindset. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's all I have So you have this. So you have your summit, you know, you, you do your ministries, you have these different events. Can you talk, talk about um, those events and when's the next one coming, if, they want, if there's one in the plan? Well, actually, one is in the plan. It's on June 3rd in New York, looking for a place now. Undecided. Oh, to I got to totally be. That's honest. my birthday. Yeah, let's talk about that before we, we go, before you really explain. Okay. My birthday is June 7th. Mine is June 2nd. I know. So I know. I plan to have a birthday bash in New York along with, I'm going to just say, our conference, Bitter to Better to Breakthrough. Because we all have been bitter. We all have gotten better. And all of us and most of us are looking for a breakthrough. So that's yes. the conference, Bitter to Better to Breakthrough. But the greatest um, love of it all is MC Shot Rock Day on June 4th in the Bronx. So she'll be okay. hosting, she will be hosting Bitter to Better to Breakthrough along with my birthday bash on June yes, 3rd. Yes, I gotta be in the building. Shoot, let me know if you need a speaker because I love sharing my story, you know. Gotcha. Um, and, and what I notice about us, and you know, shout out to your strength because, you know, people who suffer through traumatic uh, experiences like that, they never truly forget. Like people always talk about healing. Now it's what I, for me, you know, and I could be wrong. I may, or it may be different from you, but healing means being able to really go through that pain because you never forget. You still, depending on what you went through, you still got certain triggers. It could be a scent or yeah. somebody yelling in a certain way and it bring you like, back into that uh, black hole, so to speak. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. It's just your strength. That's the healing part. Yes. Uh, being able to be stronger, no, not to succumb to that black hole. Mm -hmm. huh? Definitely. So just, I'm saying, I, I, and I understand you because you're not going to tell me what to do. You're just not, you know, um, you're not going to tell me what to do. You can suggest something to me and it's the way you talk to me. You know what yeah. I mean? Because I, I guess um, the type of person that I am, I give my all when I give it. And I'm just tired of being taken advantage of. You know, even in friendship. You know what I'm saying? Even in friendship. I'm just done. I'm done with it all. And I'm okay. I know I'm not an island. But God is sending me some people that's for me. They don't want to be me. They are yes. for me. And they want to see the vision prosper. They believe in the vision that God has given me, you know, and they're doing something for this themselves. You know, they want to be a part because that's the kind of uh, ministry they have down inside of them, you know. So God is bringing some folks that's for me. So we're coming yes. to New York. So y'all get ready. Like Bishop T.D. Jake said. Yes, I'm get ready, getting get ready. ready get Am ready. I? Because I see oh, you. God, I you, you, and you be rocking the door knockers like me. I saw the and even when you. I preach in the door knockers. I could preach in Adidas or stilettos. How about that? 
Yes, and I and I and what I see that you got your down. church, you got your church door <laughs> knocking too. I'll be seeing it. Yes, you be having the church earrings too, and I'll be like, oh, she's still keeping it hip hop and cute. Yes, yes, so I do. I, but I had to learn that God wants me. To, God wants me to be me he didn't pull me out of the gutter to be saved no he wants me because how am i going to save someone else you know i got to keep it real you know and that's all people are looking for for you to be real i have to you know um you ever watch TV and you're sitting on the couch and you're watching an episode of you know someone doing an interview and they say oh i used to be in the streets but that person is sitting on the couch on the other side of the tv dying addicted to or just uh, um, any kind of addiction and if you don't tell them you know what God brought you through or how you came out of it they may not never come out so I don't mind telling my story I don't I don't I'm an open book and, and, and I'm I not ashamed you. oh I appreciate I, you and I want to yes. get your and number I, I just, okay yes I'm gonna uh, please check your DM because I always give my thank yous okay. after the interview so okay. I will hit you up in your DM and, and give I'll you your personal you next week and I'll give you the info Let's do it. Yes. And I want to um, send a major shout out to, to Shy Rock. Shout out to her, the yes. pie, one of the pioneers of females in this game. Yes. And, and, and send her the love since we're talking about it. We're going to uh, wrap it up uh, um, in a little bit, uh, you know. But I just want to say, you know, I appreciate you. And it's very commendable. Your bravery is very Anytime. commendable. And Anytime, too, darling. Giving back to the community and everything Thank like you. that. You know, I salute you because not a lot of people do sure. that. They reach a level of success and they forget. So I kind of want to get back into the culture of hip hop because okay. since you were there since the beginning, you got to see the very steps which in which it involved, okay. evolved, yes. you know? So so how do you feel like the women in hip hop, do you feel like they represent in the true essence of hip hop these days? Well, sis, you know, um, generations, generations, you know, it, it, it has changed and it's going to continue to change. It's going to continue to change. I love the women. I love the women. And, and you know, they have their struggles. Like you said in the beginning of the interview, they have their struggles because of the men. You know, the men just swallow us. But... um. Being that the way the world is today and the surgeries are in place and this is what the world is getting, um, I can't argue about it. But in the beginning, showing all the breasts and, 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 and the buttocks, you know, for our little young sisters, I did not like it. I really didn't. But um, it's commercial and sex and sex sells. So this is just the way the world is. But their music, I love them. And um, I salute them. I really can't say anything about that anymore because it's just so many. Um, it's just the, the world is different. They're going to do what they want to do, you know, and it's corporate. And if you don't give corporate what they want, well, then you don't become the star that you want to be. You know, you have to stand for something or fall for everything. So, you know, I really can't put my, my mouth on that. But I know we didn't have to take off our clothes. You know, the skills is, is what brought us and the skills will continue to bring us, you know, legends that we are. So I salute each and every woman that's out there. Yes. And, and, and we salute you, too. So is there any final words? Are we going to get more music, uh, like a surprise album or something? Because I want to hear some bars. I, I I, I still want to hear it. Like, well, you know, maybe, I don't know. I'm going to be honest. Um, I'm going to do one more. I'm doing, redoing um, a couple of my well, old Or even songs. just a single, at least. Well, you're going to get one more hip-hop. And it's the first, the best, the last of Sparky D. Okay. Just one more. Just one more. Yeah. But, you know, it's not yeah. for radio. It's, you know, just put it on Spotify or something. But just one more. I'm going, I'll go out yeah, with a bag. put out in the world. <laughs> yeah, I get that. And, and readily, I want to hear him in the back talking shit on it. It could be, it could be like a mixtape because mixtapes are popping yeah, now. I will love popping. a Sparky D mixtape. Thank you, thank you. I'm just gonna do one more hip hop, but gospel, yes, gospel hip hop, yes. You know, I say that yeah. all the time. You know, um, if God allowed me to go in the studio, I'll do it. But um, I have my books coming out, my daily devotion books coming out. Better the better the breakthrough. God has your back like a jacket. My fragrance line, which is get ready to come out actually July 12th, 
You know, I had it um, out before, but just packaging it, you know, and put it in different stores. That's what I'm getting ready to do. And um, just doing what God will have me to do. Go around doing the conferences, uplifting, engaging, and inspiring, and helping others and encouraging others to get where they need to be. Because some people need a push, you know. Um, they have it in them, but they need somebody to push them. And I'm willing to push them because that's what God has me here for, to push them where they need to be. Yes. And we need to see a Sparky D biopic and not no lifetime bullshit because they dropped the ball the last few times. Yeah, you said like, I'm disappointed. Like BET or somebody, yeah, maybe because I like what they did with New Edition. I think that was the most fire shit ever. And it's funny but, you said that because mm -hmm. 10 Networks, uh, my biopic is on the table right now as we speak. Because I think that will be very interesting. The 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 trials, the tribulations, the ups, the downs. Mm -hmm. It'll make for a great movie. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, or by, or well, even a docu series. Well, my docu series. That's it. what they're doing, and actually they're editing it right now. So get ready, get ready. Like Bishop T D Jake uh, said, have your tissue. You'll be crying. You'll be laughing. You'll be amazed. You'll be like, oh what? What the? It is what it is. I've been through hell and back. I met Lucifer himself, honey. <laughs> Well, well, I hope you slapped him on your way out. <laughs> I did because I'm here, live, safe, and yes. clean, and sanctified, having yes. a great time. Yes, amen to that. I, I want to thank you so much for, you know, spending these few moments with Absolutely. me. You know, I am so honored and, and, and I feel truly blessed. You know, you, I, you know, I never thought I would be in these positions to talk to some of the legendary, iconic people mm -hmm. of the culture I love so dearly. I was always a hip hop fan. We thank you. Even before I was doing this as a profession, and I just and I'm I'm honored to even be sitting here talking with you and everything wow. like that. So we we got what you was doing and the things that you got coming up. Is there any last inspirational words for those who may still be struggling you out know, there stay um, and still trying to find a way, or even just um female artists who's just trying to get in the game but don't have the courage to make that first step. You know, um, for the ones that are still struggling out there, just stay focused. Just know that God has your back like a jacket. You know, there's nothing too hard for God. You know, all things are possible through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, what worked for me was, you know, um, I put my right hand up and I pat my own self on the back. And that's what I want you to do. You know, for somebody that's listening right now, know that you are caught by God. Know that you are not um, 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 uh, beneath uh, uh, no one. Amen. You are not beneath. You know, you are a star. You are who God called you to be. You know, look to the hills will come up your help. You know, even if you're on your way to the um, liquor store, even if you're on your way to the crack house, even if you're on your way buying mollies and pills, just plead the blood of Jesus Christ because God hears your cry. God knows your heart and know that I love you. Amen. Know that I love you. And so does Jesus Christ. And for the sisters that's coming out right now, keep your clothes on, boo. Keep your clothes on. Your skills is your gift. You know, the Bible says your gift will make room for you. So go get them and keep your head up. I love you, child. Thank you so much. Yes, I love you too. Yes, thank you. DM me and leave your number. So because we're going to make that happen. I am. going to do that right after. We're going to make that you. happen. Okay? The Bible yes, says speak I'm ready those things as if they were. So you, we'll put you on the bill. And I mean that. I, I'm, I'm ready for it. Okay. Yes, I'm honored. All right. Love you, sis. Thank I'm you in the mountains. Me. You know it on my yes. way. See my girl moving the car now. We got to go. Yes, let's go. Let's All go. Right, Have sissy. a great time. Yes, ma'am. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. okay. Yes! Like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What? Sparky D in a place to be. Yes. See, I don't got bars like that, but I can rhyme though. My flow is unforgettable. Don't sleep on me. Don't sleep on me. That was an amazing interview with legendary hip hop's legendary first battle rapper, Sparky D, one of the first battle rappers. Shout out to Roxanne Shante and, 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 and all those that came after her. And I feel like this is a perfect time to pay homage to Babs Bunny, Queen of the Ring, for um, allowing the culture to, to bear witness that females do this shit too. Even though when you think of battle rappers, you think of sweaty, dirty ass dudes spitting in each other faces and stuff like that and, and got the wit uh, and got an amazing wit to them. But women can do that too. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Babs Bunny for um, 
carrying that torch, carrying that legacy, and give and setting a stage for other female battle rappers to come and and show their skills. Uh, shout out to Remy Ma uh, for doing Chrome Twenty Three. Um, is a new uh, league outside of Queen of the Ring, but we all know, you know, in our on our late in our age. Um, Queen of the Ring is the originator, so I really got to send shout out to, to Baz Buddy for thinking about um, female rappers, female bad rappers in such a light, and there's a lot of us, well, not me, I'm not no bad rapper, because I smack a bitch, but it, I'm glad, you know, that that, that um, she provided that outlet for them to, to um, be able to, to share in that culture, you know, um, and, I, and I hope, you know, for everybody that's listening, including men, because men go through addiction and, and different things like that, and it seems like they don't have no way out. There is a way out. You you, you are, God sets aside grace for everyone. You know what I'm saying? It's just taking that step. And with everything, even outside of addiction, even just um, trying to fulfill your dreams, all of those things takes one step at a time. Stop rushing yourself. Stop putting unnecessary pressure on you. Stop worrying about what the next man is thinking about you because at the end of the day, you're the only one living your life. And, that, and when everything comes to an end, you're the only one that have to answer certain things. So stop being in a rush. Stop putting all these unnecessary pressures on you and just take your life day by day, whether you suffer from addiction, whether you trying to fulfill a dream, or even if you're just trying to raise a great family. I mean, all those different aspects of life starts with one step and needs one step in order to, to stay sustained and, and, and so that you can move forward. And, and with that being said, I want to appreciate everybody who tuned in with us today. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, like. And even if you don't like it, click the unlike button. But then I want you to write in the comment section why you didn't like it with your hating ass. Yes, show that love. Um, this will be streaming on all streaming platforms. If you listen this on listening to this interview on a streaming platform, please give a review. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you wanted me to shut the fuck up or or speak more. Let me know what questions you would have asked because I want to hear it all. I love to interact with you guys, whether it's good, bad, or even ugly. I want all the smoke. Trust me, I can handle it. Yes. And with that being said, I wish all of you guys love, prosperity, and bravery, courage, so you can fight another day. Because your life, your story, your legacy, I wanted to stand the test of time. And with that being said, peace. And I'm off this. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and share. But most importantly, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Cha-cha-live.media. Let's get it.